I went out to Grand Forks to meet up with the Dukabors, a religious group with a complex past. Howdy, howdy, hey, Steve. Uh, nice welcome to, meet to the you. Sunshine Valley. Uh, cool. We have a dove on our uh, community center here because it's a symbol of peace. That's what Dukabors are known for. Peace. Yes. The only thing I knew about Dukabors were tales of arson, nudity, and explosions. But like any sensationalized story, there had to be more to it than that. The Dukabors originated in Russia and were led by Peter Lordly Verigin. Today, my guide is his great grandson, JJ. It was under his instructions that our people destroyed their weapons in 1895. The subsequent persecution uh, resulted in us moving to Canada. The Dukabors were agrarian based. They're still some of the best farmers around it. It's a Christian base for sure, very much community oriented. The Dukabor, by definition, is spirit wrestler. The wrestling is with the individual spirit to maintain that oneness with nature. If you're close to nature, then you're probably not very far from God. They escaped brutal and unjust persecution in Tsarist Russia, only to have issues with the Canadian government. Initially, the Dukabors operated from a commune, but the government of Canada had difficulties with that. So they persuaded them to go to individual property ownership. And this didn't sit well with many of the members. It was just a thriving community until some of the arson started. An offshoot of the Dukabar community, Sons of Freedom or the Freedomites, had the reputation of burning their own buildings. But why would they burn their own buildings? They're rebelling against the ownership. They never were meant to own that land. You're never meant to really own the building that you're living in. I had my house burned down. Why did they burn your house down? Prominently was the fact that my father was the honorary chairman of the Union of Spiritual Communities of Christ. Usually, those kinds of efforts were directed against the leadership. And some people, of course, consider that Sons of Freedom to be purists, so there's certainly a, a trait of thought that would support their sentiments but not necessarily their actions. What was so disheartening about the whole thing was all the Dukabers were stigmatized by this. Mm -hmm. When I was a teenager in Grand Forks, we were told to carry USCC cards that we belonged to this uh, non-freedomite faction. So let's talk about the new, what, what was that? Those people believed that they had nothing to hide and that the Canadian government had taken everything from them, the land that they were. They had their children were taken away from them uh, to be put in schools just like Aboriginal kids. So they said, you've taken everything, so this is who we are. Against this backdrop in 1924, Peter Lordly Verigan boarded a train on the Kettle Valley Railway. The passenger uh, car that, that he was in, somebody put a bomb right under his seat. Verigan died instantly. So here's the clothing right here. Uh, this is what he was what? wearing when the train exploded. Whoa! The force of the explosion ripped his clothes to shreds. I hopped back in the car and followed JJ to the explosion site. We still don't know who did it. And so the potential suspects range from members of his family to members of his organization to the radical group, the Sons of Freedom, to the Canadian government. No one was ever charged in Verigan's death. Holy moly. It's going to be pretty tough getting to that site, Bob, because <laughs> it's another two clicks. And uh, we got about four or five inches of snow on the ground, and I don't think our vehicles are going to make it. I don't think so either. Let's see, let's see, take a risk here. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. That's definitely not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't make it. So two kilometers up there is the site of where the, where the explosion was, and what's there? Uh, there's a little sheaf of wheat, and that sheaf of wheat is where uh, Peter Lord Vergen's body was found. The nudity, arson, and explosions are a thing of the past. We have been involved in a process of reconciliation with the Sons of Freedom, where before we would have to guard against each other. Now we pray, we play, we sing, we work together. We're all brothers and sisters under the skin. We're supposed to love everybody. And we do.